guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here. Now in this video, you guessed it, we're gonna be talking about electric ducted fan jets and how do we go from our stock system or whatever system we have in there to an upgraded, more powerful system. It doesn't matter whether you're doing 100 miles an hour, 110, 130 miles an hour, and it's just not good enough. We'll figure out in this video exactly how you bump that power level up in order for us to go faster. Now there's a couple things before we jump into the video and understand how we go through that process of upgrading our system. The couple things that we need to know beforehand. This here is the jet that I'm actually going through this process right as we speak. I've selected all my components. I ordered all my components. They've arrived. I'm actually ready to drop them into this jet. Now what I need to know beforehand, before I started this process, is my baseline. I need a baseline on the power system and I also need a baseline on where I am with speed. I want the baseline for speed so that I know where I'm coming from and where I'm going to end up. Now one of the things that I need for the power system is I need to know voltage, current, and wattage. The battery pack that I use in this particular jet is a 6S 45C 4,000 milliamp hour pack. And that pack typically in the system will run a static amount of current draw at around the 90 amp mark. Now I go ahead and multiply the loaded voltage by our current and I get the output wattage. If you're using one of these meters, it'll tell you all of this information. And the wattage that you get from that system is going to be the actual wattage that you're going to have as a baseline. Now for this particular aircraft right here, I was running at around 1900 to 2000 watts of power. That is not with the system that in fact comes with the airplane, it's from another factory system that comes in a different airplane. Now that we know where we're coming from, we can figure out where we're going to go. The next step after you've done that is to go and see what kind of battery pack you can physically get into your radio control jet. I'm starting off with 6S from the system that I want to upgrade. I'm going to bump that up to the next step and I'm looking at an 8S configuration. What I needed to do is drop my 8S packs in the jet to make sure that I have enough physical room for them and that I can adjust them for center of gravity purposes. If I can't adjust for center of gravity, I'm going to have to figure out how I can get the center of gravity to all work out. The motor weight is going to change, so I'm going to be balancing a couple changing factors. This is what you want to do before you start picking out your power system. Step one, figure out the voltage that you're going to run. In this setup, we're running the 8S. Now let's go ahead and jump into how we figure out what speed control and motor we're going to use. In addition to that, we're also going to be picking up a new fan unit that can handle the power that we're going to be throwing at it. Hey guys, so here we are. We're at the computer. We're going to go through this entire process that I use in order to select our fan unit. Now, I'm in no way, shape, or form affiliated with this particular website. I simply made an order. I was really happy with what I received. They were very quick. Everything worked out excellent. Now, the, one of the first things that we have to do is figure out exactly what fan unit we want to use, and then we can match the power system components to that fan unit. First thing that we're going to do here is hover over the EDF units and EDF components, and we're going to select the jet fan. I have a few jet fan units already. I want to also upgrade and use the jet fan for my next build as well. Now I have to know what size I'm going to be replacing. I know that that particular EDF jet that I just showed you is an 80 millimeter. So let's go ahead and select the 80 millimeter jet fan option here. And now I got to be able to select the option that I'm looking for. Now I want an entire EDF unit with all the components. I'm going to go ahead and select the option that would give me that. And that is the jet fan 80 millimeter V3 here. So this unit goes on to talk about exactly what this fan has to offer. You can go ahead and read that if it does interest you. All the goodies are in this area here. You want to know this here. It's got the dimensional specifications for you. It also talks about what kind of motors that this thing can accept as well as the shaft diameter that you're going to have to use on the motor. And then it tells you what kind of input power this is rated for. We can run all the way up to 4,500 watts. We're going to be nowhere close to that limit in what we're selecting. However, you could see the power potential this fan has to offer, which would then probably get you if you match up the 4,500 watts to about 4.6 kgs of thrust, which is incredible. That's a lot of thrust. 
for an 80 millimeter fan. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and scroll down. We're gonna look at this particular image. This is where all the magic happens. This is a chart that represents a lot of battery packs and motors that have been used on this fan. And this is the data that we can now analyze in order to pick out our system. We want to run eight cells lithium polymer battery pack. So then we're gonna be looking at the small area here where there's eight cells being used. And on this particular page, we're gonna match up the one that is best suited for our application. So right now, my requirements is I don't wanna be pushing my battery packs too hard. I'm gonna be using 4,000 milliamp hour battery packs at 45C. I know they can handle 90 amps or so very well. I want a power system that is gonna be within that sort of range. We go ahead, we look at what options we have. It looks very similar at 105, 110, and then we got 90 amps here. So right away, this catches my attention. This is definitely one that I wanna focus in on. Let's learn more about it by figuring out what kind of motor it is. It's the high-end technology motor, HET 700-60, and it's at 1738 kV. That's the RPM per volt. We know that we're gonna run the 8S 90 amps and that's gonna get us a total of 2.6 kilowatts of power. We know that we're already running around the 1900 watt power range. Getting a bump of around 600 to 700 watts is gonna be huge for us. We're not trying to break any records with this system. We just want a nice bump in power so that we can go faster. This setup is looking ideal. The next thing that I need to do, since I've now selected the fan that I want, which is the JetFan 80, and I'm now selecting the motor that I want to get, which is the 1738 kV HET motor, I want to look at speed controls. Now I do have a 100 amp speed control. This is a potential. However, I do like to have a lot more headroom in my system. I'm probably going to be looking at a speed control closer to 120 amps in order to make this setup more reliable. That's the next step in our process, selecting that speed control. Once we have that done, we have the full entire power system selected. So this is what it looks like. We have a motor that's gonna pull potentially 90 amps. We need to match a speed control that's gonna be able to deliver that. Now I definitely wanna give myself 30% headroom. I'll pull up a calculator. I'm gonna look at 90 amps and multiply that by about 30% headroom. That gives us 117 amps. Therefore a 120 amp speed control would be ideal. Knowing that you have that extra 30 amps of headroom between what it could draw and what your speed control can provide is gonna make your system more reliable. And that's definitely one of the things that's very important every single one of my setups is reliability it's no fun at all if you're flying your jet around and then you lose a speed control or you lose any sort of component that has to do with your power system a dead stick landing on an EDF jet is not always possible depending on where you are so reliability is definitely important here that's why we want that 30 amps of headroom the next thing to look at is just to reconfirm I already know but if you don't know you can reconfirm the C rating and the battery pack we're using a 4,000 milliamp hour to calculate what kind of continuous discharge we can get out of that I'm gonna use the 4 amp hour I just simply just took my 4,000 I'm gonna divide it by a thousand I get four and then I multiply that by the C rating and I'm using a 45 C pack and the 45C is a continuous rated specification. We're not interested in peak values. We're only interested in continuous power. Here, this battery can deliver 180. I'm gonna be 100% headroom in here. I only wanna draw about 90 amps from a battery that can dump 180 amps. That is ideal. That's what I want for this setup. I wanna be easy on those battery packs. At the same time, I'm bumping up my power and everything here looks great. So that's really how you go ahead and select your power system to know that everything is going to be reliable within your system and based off of what options are out there. Now there's other websites that you can find charts like this where people are testing motors in order to drop them into specific fans. That's the data that you want to look for. A couple things to keep in mind when you're going and selecting your system is that these charts are not going to be identical to your specific system when you select your components. Even if you happen to use these exact battery packs that does not mean that you're gonna end up with this 90 amp value. It's another key reason why we want to leave ourselves with headroom. It's the same thing with the thrust specifications that you're getting here as well. These are all in terms of kilograms of thrust. It does not mean that within your electric ducted fan jet that you're gonna get this much thrust out of your system when installed. Installation of the fan, there's gonna be flow restrictions that's gonna slow that air down and not get you the same amount of thrust 
in one plane versus another. Just a couple items to keep in mind that you're not taking these as literal numbers. There will be tolerances on all these numbers that you're looking at, which is a very good reason why when you get your system and you start installing everything into your airplane, you want to do a bench test. You want to grab the numbers. What kind of wattage are you pulling? What is the amperage? What kind of voltage drop are you getting? You want to analyze all of those numbers, very similar to what we show and demonstrate on the channel. Uh, within other videos. This way you have a good idea. If you don't do this, then you're leaving yourself in the dark, completely open to risk and all kinds of potential for failure. That's what we want to avoid. Reliability is number one. So just a couple pointers that I did want to point out before you go ahead and select all your components and build up your upgraded machine. Now one thing I also have to mention about picking out our power system is we don't necessarily know the exact speed that we're going to get out of this power system. We could end up with a speed boost of X amount of miles an hour, but unless you have somebody that owns that particular power system as well as using a similar battery to you and in the same aircraft, that's the only time you can really estimate accurately what kind of speed that you're going to get out of it. Now the reason why you can't estimate the speed increase from a wattage increase for any particular aircraft is because it does depend on the drag of your aircraft, the type of setup of your aircraft, the exact battery pack that you're using with that aircraft. It even comes down to where your neutral surfaces are positioned on the airplane. If you have them bent up slightly, your ailerons are a little high and your flaps are a little low, that can also create that extra drag slowing your plane down. There's a lot of factors that come into play here. What we do know is when we we increase wattage we can only increase the amount of speed it may not be a proportional increase but we know that we're in the direction that is going to be benefiting us from that perspective i hope you enjoyed the video like the video if you do don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that i can see you in that next video thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you next monday